Hey, what's up? This is Philip Ellis, and I'm going to show you real quick my master set list. And uh, this is my the set list that I use pretty much every time we play. Uh, every time the Ivy Band plays, we have the set list with the, the tempos and the time signatures and the names of the songs. And then I put a little uh, marker here for if there's a sermon or especially for whenever we're done. Because if we, you know, we, we get on a roll, we're playing all these songs, if I don't have this done marker, I'm just probably going to go into the next song. And uh, so I, that's a, just a good visual reminder uh, for me to be done. Um, you can color code these really easily by right clicking and going down here in color code. And that's uh, kind of what I did here as well. I color coded everything by what output it is going to. So these are all going to two. And this is, a, this is a real simple way to do it. This is not how I do it now, but this is how we started off doing it. So everything in green goes to left. Everything in blue goes to right. And you basically just plug an eighth inch into your computer headphone jack and uh, send, you know, split everything up. So you, you get your, your click going to your ears only, and then the, uh, the tracks can go to the house and to your ears. So that's just a quick overview of my master set list uh, uh, at, the, at the time whenever we just used uh, a right and a left. We are going to attempt to take our old file that we, that we created in the last video and we're going to add some tracks to it. So we got song two, one, three, and four. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to add some tracks. So right now we just have our set list with the click tracks. Um, so you're going to need tracks. If you don't have tracks, there are websites that have tracks out there that you can buy that people have made. There's websites that have the actual stems from records that you've heard. Um, and you can actually get it to sound exactly like the record, which is kind of cool. And then the other option is just to create your own tracks. And we're lucky enough to, to have a little Pro Tools rig here, and we create our own tracks. Whether it's a keyboard pad, or uh, maybe we want a little bit chunkier, thicker guitar, uh, or maybe we want to uh, reinforce the gang vocals, so we, we sing some gang vocals, melody. And, uh, or maybe, maybe I just want to add some percussion parts into it that I create in Ableton Live. So I will, I will do that. Um, and you can do that if you have studio type uh, equipment you can actually do this all in Ableton Live as well. We're gonna move forward and pretend like you know how to get tracks um, and then we're gonna talk about putting them in here and uh, saving them and, and storing them. So I'm gonna open up my Ivy backing tracks folder and so what we're gonna do is we have our tracks right here so it's it's literally as simple as dragging a track into the slot that we want it on. And so you'll just have to organize your clip slots and your track title bars to kind of coincide with what tracks you want there. So this is Rhodes. So I'm going to call this, uh, rename it Rhodes. And then we're going to do toms. So I know that not all my songs are going to have toms in them. So I'm just going to call this um, extra, extra drums. Okay. And then we got some gang vocals. And now you'll see that this says MIDI. And this is an audio file. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and delete that. We're going to insert an audio track. And I'm going to put my gang vocals right there. And this is going to this is going to be gang vocals. Gang vocals. Okay. Um, then what else do we have? We're going to have count in and we have main pads. So I need two more audio tracks. So insert audio track, insert audio track again. And these are the main pads. So I'm going to rename that pads. And then we have count in. So I'm going to put that right there. And this count in. And I like to put count in right next to the click source because your click source is, is your MIDI track on, on channel one. 
And so um, you can click on this. You can double click on any of the clips. Uh, and these are your audio files. And you have a few choices um, to mess with. Um, so right now I know that this um, is 76 is the tempo. So I'm actually going to edit my launch tempo to be 76. And if I if these were all recorded um, correctly, they should play in time with my Ableton click track. So I'm going to turn my Ableton click track on and I'm going to start one, this. One, two, one, two, three, four. And you can see that they sound like they are actually uh, behind the beat a little bit. One, Let's listen again. Two, one, two, three, four. So the drums come in just a hair behind the uh, the click track. So I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we can easily adjust um, the 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 start marker to start where we want it to. So I can zoom in as as much as possible in this area down here. Then it gives me this little area, and then this is the start marker. So I'm just going to drag this. Not that much, but like just a fraction. And you can actually set it manually right here if you need to. But I'm just going to drag it right there, and now I'm going to see what happens. One, two, one, two, three, four. And that sounds much better. So if you want to quickly navigate to a section of the song that has your track in it, um, for instance, this is the gang vocals and the gang vocals don't come in until right here, two minutes into the song. So I'm going to hit one, launch. Two, I'm going to hover two, over three, this. Four. I'm going to click and drag up. And then we'll check this out. So you notice that the vocals are off a little bit. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did to the drums. We're going to zoom in. We're going to set this at uh, right there, 29. That's, well, you know what? Let's do it even with the other one. So 32. Let's see if this does it. One, two. Okay, and so everything appears to be on beat now. Um, I know that the Rhodes has a staccato part, but we're not going to mess with that right now. So that's how you add your tracks. You're, you are going to want to go through and make sure that everything lines up with the click track. Unless perhaps you have an audio click track, and that might be easier in some cases because you can bounce everything down from zero in Pro Tools. And theoretically, that should work with this, but sometimes for some reason, for some reason I do not know why, the tracks don't always line up. And so I some, sometimes have to adjust my start marker. Once you have a song and all of the, the, the clips lined up, then you can use your master launch scene button right here to launch every single clip at the exact same time and uh, then you play through your song and so you can always have a count in at the beginning count ins are good so you know where to come in one two one two three four and you can record your own count in i think we just found a, a voice on the internet that was counting and we made it say what we wanted to okay and really quickly we're going to want to set the click track to go to just our ears and we're going to want to set the tracks to go to the front of the house so the way we're going to do that in this setup, you can come over here and click this button and it shows your ins and outs and we're going to put this one, this is actually right, this is no output for the, the MIDI click. And then audio to extension out, put this on one and then do the same extension out and put all the other ones on two. And then you have that, and it's set up to go, this will be going to your left, this will be going to your right. And you can just put the eighth inch uh, jack into your computer and split that to two direct boxes. And one of them you send to your ears, and one, the other one you send to your ears and the front of the house. So in session view, if you play to a track, you are locked into the arrangement. And what I mean by that is that 
um, you know these these audio files I can't really put a marker on all of them um, to say hey go back to the verse or hey repeat the chorus or whatever it is so if you have an arrangement for a song then this is gonna play at the same every single time if you wanted to separate your scenes into like let's say verse of song one chorus of song one bridge of song one you can do that it requires a, a little bit more dexterity when you're when you're um, pushing buttons <laughs> and playing drums at the same time or if you have a keyboard player or somebody that can do that then that's cool for the most part we play an actual you know specific arrangement if we have tracks so I hope that that helps and uh, if you have any questions just write them in the comments below